We're now ready to start using the warp generator application on the PC. But first of all, we need to actually connect our VP793 scalers to our network. Now, I have a choice here. I can either set static IP addresses and just use a network switch or a hub, or if I prefer, I can use a router or a real computer network, in which case the VP793s will run DHCP and take their IP addresses from the network router or from a server on the network. Now, once they, if they are on DHCP, I do need to know what the IP addresses are. I can either use the network discovery tool, which you can download from the website, which will find the units and tell me what the IP addresses are, or alternatively, I can just go into the on-screen display to look up what the IP addresses are. So now, if we actually show the on-screen menu on the screen, in this particular one, if we go to system menu, and then we go to network settings, you can see that we've already preset this to static addressing, and we've already defined an IP address, a net mask, and a gateway. I would need to do that ready to suit the IP address range that I had set for my laptop or my PC. One little point to explain to you, when you change between static and dynamic addressing, we recommend that you exit the menu because that causes the settings to be saved automatically and then you repower the VP793. You need to do this because some network switches and some routers don't like a device with the same MAC address suddenly changing its IP address and won't route the IP traffic to it. By repowering the scaler, the VP793 or 792 or 794, after changing from static to dynamic or vice versa and setting the IP address, you re-register the scaler with the network router or switch so that it knows to route the traffic to that MAC address. So now we're going to show you how to use the warp generator application to set up the warping on the VP793s. The warping is used for aligning the two pictures from the two projectors, but also for aligning the picture correctly on our curved screen. For those of you who haven't used warping before, warping is a means of pre-distorting the shape of the picture, so that when it hits the display surface it looks visually correct. It's electronic bending of the image, so that the image, when it hits the surface which naturally bends the light, then looks correct to the viewer. So, as you will see on the screen of this laptop, we're now going to run the Warp Generator tool, which we've pre-installed on the laptop. Warp Generator is a program which you download from the website. It's a free download. It works with all our products which have Warp and Blend capability. To run it on your PC, you do also need to install Net Framework from Microsoft, which is a free download from the Microsoft website as well. So here we have the Warp tool. And as you can see, it has an array of different files. It has grid files and warp files. These are the files that explain the shape of the picture. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect to one of the scalers, one of the VP793s. Initially, it's going to ask me if I want to connect to the one I last connected to. In this case, I believe we're going to do that. But if we said no, we'd have the opportunity to enter the IP address of a new unit that we hadn't already connected to. So we've connected to the unit, and as you can see, the connect button has greyed out at the top left, and the disconnect button is now showing as active, meaning we are connected to a unit. So, off we go. So we're going to make a new grid, and we're going to give it a name. We can call it whatever we like, it's just a text name. It's useful if you give it something which means something to you. And at this point, we get a display which has only four corner points that we can adjust. And it shows some red lines which show you the shape of the picture you're going to get. So how this works is, you start off with a small number of points to roughly get the shape correct. And then you can upsample or increase the number of points by creating new control points between each of your existing points. This is a very powerful feature of VP793 and also VP792 and 794 because most warp scalers that you have to choose the number of points you want right from the start. This makes it very long-winded to set up complicated shapes because you have so many points to adjust. 
uniquely, products like VP793 allow you to start with a small number of points, get the shape roughly correct, and then improve the accuracy of the shape by filling in the points. So let's go. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the warp generator so it's in a suitable mode for actually blending several projectors together. There are several default options which you've seen on the screen we've just deselected. Those options are very useful if we're using a single projector onto a screen because they shorten the setup process considerably, but they're not suitable for when we're blending, so we've deselected them. The next thing we're going to do is show you how we can drag points around to change the shape of the picture. So, for example, if we take the top left point and we pull it down, you can see this has changed the shape that's shown on the PC screen. At the moment, this will have no effect on the picture from the projector. But if we click the Send button, this will send the new warp grid to the projector the scaler will then process the file and you can see that the picture shape has now changed on the screen. By doing this process with lots of different points we can eventually align the picture to be the right shape, size and position on the screen. So now we've moved some more points on the laptop and we're going to click the send button again. This again will send another new shape to the scaler, which will process the information it's been given and then change the shape of the picture. Now, what we want to do is we want to then show you how you set up one box in its entirety. Because we're blending, we have to set up a left and a right scaler. So to save a bit of time, what we're going to do is we're going to set one of the scalers up ready for you in this demonstration so that you're watching us set up the second one rather than it take too long. So as you can now see, we've pre-configured the warp to the right-hand scaler, the scaler driving the right-hand VP793, so the picture is now square on the screen and nicely aligned with the border of the screen. It's just like one of those cookery programs where I've got one I prepared earlier. So now we're going to set up the left-hand scaler, the left-hand VP793 and projector for which we're going to take you back to the view of the laptop. So the first thing we're going to do is just to show you on the screen, if you watch the mouse pointer, we can choose the granularity of the movement of the calibration. And at the moment we were at a very fine granularity of 0.7 pixels. We're going to change to 5 pixel steps. And the reason for doing that is at the moment we want to use the arrow keys on the keyboard so that we can drive points around with the arrow keys rather than dragging them and dropping them with the mouse. Dragging and dropping them with the mouse is okay if you're doing a single projector, but it's quite hard for getting two projectors aligned. It's much easier to step through with the keyboard. So we're going to select a point, and then using the arrow keys on the keyboard, we're going to drive that point around. Now it's going to move on the laptop screen, but it won't move live on the projector. It will move on the projector when we click the send button. there you can see it's moved up a bit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take you through a process iteratively of moving that point around and sending the position to the VP793 with the send button. So I'm just going to let you watch that a while while Mark, who's the operator here, goes through that process. Mark's now going to adjust the bottom left a little to, because the bottom left isn't in quite the right place on the screen. There you can see the bottom left is getting much better. We now need to do something with the top and the bottom right. So we're going to do the bottom right. and we're going to do the top right as well. And we'll click the send button and again this will send the new shape to the VP793. So the VP793 has made the new change. 
At this point, we're going to upsample the grid because we need more control points. So now we've gone from having four control points, just the corners, to having nine control points, which gives us points centrally in the image as well. Now you can see the image is starting to come together. The scale is just redrawing the picture. You can see it's starting to square up now. It's not looking bad in the left and the centre of the left-hand projector, but the top right corner still needs some attention and it still needs a bit of squaring up. So now we're getting fairly square at the left hand side. You can see the linearity is not quite right yet. That's something we have to deal with once we've got the picture shape roughly right. One thing that I'll tell, talk you through while we're doing this setup, and Mark will continue with doing the setup, is to explain what's actually going on here. This is doing what's called curve fitting, which is why when you alter a point in one part of the screen, you see effects elsewhere. Imagine an array of rubber bands and you press at one point. It affects where you are, but it also affects other areas of the screen because everything's joined together. It's kind of like having an elastic mesh or an elastic grid. By you pulling the points around, you can generate and mould different shapes with the light from the projector. And that's precisely what's going on here. At this point, we're now going to move a whole column. So you see that we clicked on the Move Column feature, and that allows us to move a whole column of points so as to start to correct some of the linearity of the picture rather than change the absolute shape.